Hello, you amazing people. Welcome back to RX Memes. Today, we are doing something completely different for this channel, and I hope to be doing a lot more of it, actually. Um, I feel inspired with kind of all of this new information that's coming out on spirituality and law of attraction. Can you hear that? My stomach's growling so hard right now. Sorry if that scared anybody. Um, yeah, so... Today we are going to be jumping into the subreddit r slash randonauts and to me this is a fascinating subject. I'm going to start the video, like the first five minutes or so of the video will be explaining what randonauting is and trying to explain my theory on why it works so well um, and then I'll get into some posts from reddit. I do love this idea of, of the law of attraction and manifestation and I think that it's really awesome. If you want to skip the full explanation and jump right into today's post, I'll put the time on the screen right here that you can skip to. And if you've gone randonauting, let me know because that's fascinating to me. If you want to share your story, my email is in my profile page. You can email it to me and, and I would love to include it in my next video on this. Um, and yes, so let's get into the explanation and then to today's stories. And... Yeah. Just recently I've been learning about this new thing called rando nodding and I think that it came a thing to do within the last year or so but just in the last couple of days it's began getting insanely popular with everyone being quarantined and um, having nothing to do essentially. So I kind of scrolled through Reddit to see what the deal was and it's really cool if you're into like pseudoscience and spirituality and like manifestation, law of attraction and all of that. Um, so before we get into today's like Reddit posts, I want to share kind of some of the FAQ on randonauts.com. So the first paragraph from Randonautica FAQs is why do people randonaut? People go randonauting to have a fun and meaningful adventure Use quantum randomization as a tool for breaking out of a probability tunnel. Create their own legend. Increase attention, awareness, learning ability. Experience the mind-matter interaction phenomena. Find enchantment and magic in the world around them. Explore and enhance their spirituality. Take their brains to deal with uncertainty. Take a thrill ride into the unknown. Apply esoteric principles like the simulation matrix magic. So my understanding of what randonauting is, because I have not done it, and I still don't know if I'm going to, and I'll get to that a little bit later in the video, um, as to why I don't really want to jump into it. Um, but geocaching, if you're familiar with that, it's kind of like a spiritual geocache. How does it work? So many new randonauts have stated this. How is this possible? from the Randonauts Leadership Group and the Core Theory experts at the Fathom Project? The answer is, we don't know yet. Decades of research have shown that the mind has an influence on matter, the world around you. Reports are showing that when Randonautica uses a quantum random number generator, QRNG, to derive a location for the user to journey to, this creates incredibly anomalous occurrences, often driven by the thought emphasis, intention of the user. The Randonauts movement is a global phenomenon. So, for those of you who are into... Actually, okay, I'll continue this and then I'll touch back on that in a minute. Why should I set an intention? You can test your mind's influence on the world around you by setting an intention, which is an emphasized thought that essentially sets the theme for your journey. How do I set an intention? Before getting a quantum point, clear your mind and think about an intention to set the story for the journey you are about to embark on. Visualization helps. Attractor, void, or anomaly. These are the ways the algorithm reads the quantumly randomized dots. Attractor, the most quantum dots. Void, the least quantum dots. Anomaly, the strongest of either. The QRNG creates true randomization, then the algorithm reads density or scarcity, finds a center point, and translates it to coordinates with the radius you've set. Attractors and voids can produce different results for the users experienced. 
and you can find more information on the terms and theory page. And I'll link all of these pages below. This is all public on randomrocks.com again. But so my theory on this, I haven't read the theory page. It might say something similar, but if you're into the law of attraction or manifestation, one of the biggest things about trying to manifest is not being in a want frequency. So let's say you're trying to manifest money because I know a lot of us would love to have a lot more money, right? Um, or love, another thing that a lot of people want and desire. Those are relatively low vibrational states to be in. And when you want something, you're telling the universe that you don't have it. You are desiring it because you don't have it. You are coming from a place of lack. Whereas if you can visualize yourself having it and act as though you already have it, kind of set the intention that you have it and let it go, it's much more likely to come to you. This works so well for manifestation because essentially all you're doing is like testing something. And because so many people, um, because it works for so many people, there's no doubt that it's not going to work for you. So let's say you are going to an attractor and you set your intention as pineapples. And then all of a sudden there's like literally the word pineapple written or pineapple street or whatever. That's because you threw it out to the universe. You let it go. There was no tension holding it. There was no desire. It was just like in and out and you gave the universe your order. And there it was. That's my theory on why this works so well. Anyways, I wanted to give that bit of information before we jump into these Reddit posts because I didn't understand it at first and so I think this will make it a lot easier to understand or at least see where these people are coming from. Whether you believe in it or you don't believe in it, I think it's still really cool that this is so huge right now. I do believe in manifestation, like I said, and, and I am quite spiritual, so I think that this is awesome. Um, I've been learning about this massive spiritual awakening that's going on within the world and that's another reason why I kind of got exhausted recording pro revenge and like all of those negative stories because I felt like I was almost attracting more negativity in my life somehow or just getting more aggressive and annoyed all the time and I really had to take a step back from reading all these stories that that came from a place of anger and you can roll your eyes if you want but that's just like how I felt so if I can share more positivity and more positive stories, I'd be, I'd love to come back. So uh, let me know in the comments if you would try this and let's get into today's posts. I went on my first rando knot adventure this afternoon. I chose an attractor and set my intentions as finding my path and the color red, just because it's my favorite color. When I got a location, it was just a straight shot down the main road. So I grabbed my bike, put on some headphones, shoved my phone in my fanny pack, and listened in on the directions my GPS gave me along the way. Instead of taking me to the main path, it redirected me to take the exact bike running path I take almost every day. There were multiple times it could have redirected me just to turn around or take a different turn back to the initial road, but instead, it just took me through my path. Then, when I finally reached my destination point, it was a house, the only house on this cul-de-sac, with its garage door open, and inside, all the walls were painted red. It's so amazing. Like, it really shows us the power that we have as spiritual beings. First time. Fox is the intention. All right. Takes us down some hellish back road. Can't make it. Back out. Still fun. Later on the way home, we do it again. Show me something interesting I didn't see before. A random camp stock on a lake. Great view, never been there before. All right, cool. But then we look around. Attached to the dock is a carved fox. Something we didn't see before. My partner and I have been talking about marriage and junk. Naturally, I got nervous at the thought, so I asked for an important message about my future, and I asked for something yellow because it's my favorite color. We started driving and it brought us to the yellow painted steps of an old folks home my partner used to work at. I think I got my answer. Our intention was the alternate ending, the unseen beings. My brother and I set out from the south end of Tulsa today to a void spot, 45 minutes east, and we came down a back road that led to our void. 
That was where things got interesting. Coming near the void, the two of us started feeling odd. My brother and I have always shared a deep bond and sometimes the ability to share the exact same feelings. We pulled over into a little gravel patch near where the void was. We weren't able to get the coordinates as it was on someone's property, but the area we were in, about 30 meters from the void, was yet very still. He wasn't feeling good about the spot, so he stayed with the car. I got out and headed towards the spot. I looked over the fence line. I could just make out a large pond that was set just through the tree line and showed on Google Maps as being just before the coordinates. As I stared, wondering, two dogs came up to me, wagging their tails and looking for pets. One was three-legged, so I supposed he more or less hopped on over to me. I gave them plenty of scratches behind the ears before they both turned and jumped through the barbed wire fence towards the void. I decided to follow them and placed one foot onto the grass off the road, and both dogs immediately turned and growled, refusing to give me ground. When I took my foot off, they were happy again, but upon placing my foot back, they growled. I brought my back leg onto the grass, then suddenly the wind died and the birds quit singing. The dog's warnings were the only sound. I checked over my shoulder at my car, and my brother had moved over to the driver's seat and was staring me down intently. I decided to head back. The closer I got to the car, the more the birds came back, yet the dogs never moved from their spot. I hopped in and my brother started the car. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Why? I asked. I don't know. Everything just seems a little weird, my brother responded. He proceeded to play some music, and since he doesn't have Spotify Premium, he went to the Godzilla soundtrack and hit shuffle. But the first song to play wasn't from the album, it was from something else. We both stared at the screen on my car for nearly a full minute before either of us could move. The title of the song read, People Go Missing Every Day. We were sent to an area of trails behind this school. The second we got there, when we walked to this tunnel and we were greeted with this cat that wouldn't break eye contact with us, we explored the forest and found this platform with MF Doom graffiti on it. The energy matched what we were looking for. That explains it so perfectly. Your energy attracts the same kind of energy, which is why when you wake up in a bad mood and you stub your toe and you get stuck in traffic and you are late for work and all of that, that's because your energy, like, it's not as complicated as saying, like, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want when you're manifesting. It's the energy you put out. And it's the same thing, like, when you have a good day, right? You attract more good. Like, all of these amazing things happen because that's what you are attracting. And this post explains it perfectly. Sometimes I'm really bad at explaining, so I apologize. But the title of this is that they wanted to see something paranormal and messed up. And so... What they found, the energy matched exactly what they were looking for. That is so cool. All right, so those are the posts that I will share today. What do you think? Are you guys going to do it? Have you done it? I still am really iffy about the subject. I think the energy is a scary thing to play with. Essentially, essentially, it's like magic, and magic is not always like for good, right? There's dark magic and black magic, and I think that... If you're so, if you if you can focus enough to make like a, a real intention, go for it if you're interested in it. But we've also like Aladdin works, and like you need to be very careful with your wishes and with your desires because there's no going back. And I've just seen way too many horror movies that I think that there's that idea that everything, every action has a reaction. So what if you? manifest something positive and then when you're not going towards it you're like manifesting something negative or, or the opposite of that or what happens if you're trying to manifest something and it's not at the place and then you like change your intention and then you find something negative because of you changed your attention I don't know does this make any sense I'd love to discuss this further um if you want to hop on my discord I will leave that in the box below and if you're interested in hearing more of these stories let me know in the comments I am really inspired about these this I think it's so cool I think that it's really fascinating and um, I feel like motivated again to get back on YouTube it's just 
as I said before, I felt like I was covering so much negative things and I was just like attracting more negativity. So what a perfect segue into coming back to YouTube and spreading this kind of more law of attraction, pseudoscience, spiritual coolness that is rando nodding. Anyways, I will see you in my next video. Bye.